In this video, I'm gonna break down the differences between selling physical products and as well as STL files. And by the end of this video, I'm gonna help you decide whether or not you should sell either physical, STL, or even a combination of both. My name is Brandon. I'm a full-time designer and creator at Make It 3D. I've been creating and selling 3D printable designs for the past five years. You know, I've created my own designs such as functional products, flexies, articulated designs, to even having my own communities around 3D printing, helping other people learn how to create their own designs and models. And after working with hundreds of students, helping them learn how to create their own models, and as well as helping other students transition to selling physical products to even selling STL files, what I wanna do is break down the differences between the two and exactly what you should choose and pick if you decide to go all in in this hobby. Now, really quickly, before I jump into that, I wanna clarify who this video is for. This video is for anyone who is a designer, someone that knows how to model or create models, and who wants to create artwork, products, or designs for the 3D printing community, someone who's already selling 3D printed products and who's looking for other avenues or sources of income to increase their reach, and anyone who has an existing business who's looking to incorporate 3D printing into their existing service or catalog. If you fit into any of those criteria and you're not selling copyrighted material or things that you shouldn't be selling, then this video is for you. So here on my notebook, I wrote down a couple of key things and ideas that I kind of picked up over the years after doing this for a long time. I've both sold physical products which I designed, printed, shipped out, and mailed out myself to selling STL files that have done tens of thousands of dollars in sales and as well as monthly recurring income just off of commercial memberships. And just based off of the key things that I've learned over the years, I kind of boiled it down to three main things that I think that would resonate with most people who are trying to go into either or. So if you're selling physical products, there's a couple of key things you need to know. The first one is that you are selling a tangible product just hands down, you're selling something that you either designed yourself, you outsource to have it made, modeled, or designed, and or you have a license to print and sell, which you are printing that item, and then you are pricing that item for whatever cost that is, and then you sell it, and in exchange, someone's gonna give you their hard-earned money for your product. And that's the difference between selling STL and physical. You have a tangible product, which gives you much more leverage in addition to other growth opportunities, such as selling in person and online. The second thing is that if you know how to create your own designs and you create a design that solves a specific problem within a specific niche, that allows you to position your product with a bit more margin and more profit. So for example, if you're selling like flexies or toys or fidgets, and look, there's nothing wrong with that but these are lower ticket items that you need to sell in volume in order to make up the profit difference. Now, with that said, I do wanna be clear, there is nothing wrong with selling fidgets, flexies, or toys. It's a quick impulse buy and people still spend money on it. But the key point I wanna mention here is that if you wanna make, let's just say a thousand bucks, and if you sell one flexi for like $4 profit, let's just say in a perfect world, well, that means you need to sell 250 of those flexies in volume in order to make that thousand bucks. Where if you have your own design or product that you made yourself that solves a niche specific problem or, or provides a specific solution, that allows you to charge much more higher profit margins, allowing you to sell less while making more at the same time. Now, keep in mind, even if you're still selling flexies or fidgets, that doesn't mean your journey stops there. You still have other opportunities to grow, or you can also remarket those products in different ways, like mystery bags, mystery boxes, blind boxes. You know, there's a whole industry around selling blind boxes and materials and toys that you wouldn't know what you're getting until you open it and they charge you way more for that product compared to just buying it outright or knowing what it is. Just go to your local Target or CVS and you know what I'm talking about. The next thing I wanna cover when it comes to selling physical items is that if you know how to position yourself as a brand, as an authority, and you build a customer base, is that this becomes a sellable asset. So if you're someone that's selling a product that you design and you're getting customers and you're building customer loyalty, maybe you're getting a repeat customers. Maybe you have customers spending more. Maybe you have customers coming back, buying more, telling their friends. Well, at some point that becomes a sellable asset because then someone else, let's just say in a hypothetical scenario, maybe five years from now, let's just say you don't want to do 3D printing anymore. Let's just say you're tapped out. You don't like it. It's just not for you. You don't want to print stuff anymore. Well, that means at some point you can go to someone else or position your store online and say, hey, look, I'm selling this business. I don't want to be part of it. This is what it's making per month. This is the profit. This is the item I'm selling. You can either sell that business on its own or you can give other people the license to that product. Or if you want to scale it up even further, maybe you can change that product into a manufactured product instead of a 3D printed product. And that's my point with this. When you're selling physical items, this gives you a ton of opportunity to go in whatever avenue you want. There's even people who've went on Shark Tank selling 
products that were 3D printed to the sharks on Shark Tank. So truthfully, you have a lot of opportunity selling physical prints. You just need to figure out exactly what that niche is for you. And or if you already have that niche, creating something of value that people would want to exchange money for. Now, shifting gears here, I'm going to cover exactly what goes into selling STL files and some of the upsides to doing that. So the first thing here is that when you're selling STL files, you hold digital assets. These are digital assets that will live longer than you. And as as in, as funny as that sounds, it is true. Your STL file will basically live for the rest of time. And if you have a great product, a great file, a design that people want, that will literally yield you returns for the rest of your life and even after your life. And that's my whole point with digital products or STL files. That allows you to position your products in front of people and all they have to do is just pay for that product and then that's all there is left to it. And truthfully, if you really like to create stuff, this is a great way to build income. The second thing, it's also passive, it's lifetime. So with STL files, if you go to any sort of marketplace, you buy the file, then they download it and then they print it and then you're pretty much hands off. In addition to all the other opportunities, I've had opportunities presented to me to design products, to create designs, to work with other people, to you know work with companies simply off of the designs that I've had. And just being able to monetize your expertise over a physical product just means that you have much more freedom. That means you're able to make money anywhere you want. And additionally, you're also not capped to your 3D printer. And the last thing I wanna cover here is that it's scalable. So for example, for 3D printed products, what I see for most people is that if someone wants to increase their revenue you or their income, they have to increase their printers to match that. So you will very rarely see someone who is increasing month over month without having to buy more machines unless they're looking for other avenues or other resources or ways to monetize. And that's my point with, with STL files. All you really need is just one or two printers. Hey, maybe even four or five. If you're really going bold with it, you create designs, you print them, you take photos for it, and then you market it online. And if you have a unique style proposition, or maybe you're someone that just how, knows how to create really cool designs that people want, well, that file will be uploaded and just yield you returns and income for the rest of time. Now, I do wanna be clear, there's nothing wrong with selling physical items and there's nothing wrong with selling STL files. And I also wanna be clear, I do have a little bit more of a bias around STL files because truthfully, it's one of the best opportunities to create designs and files while building passive monthly income from your designs. And truthfully, anyone, any artist, any designer would love to be paid for their artwork and being able to see other people make money from your designs and your artwork while building a full-time income from it. And truthfully, I've seen other people do it from my designs and then seeing them have so much joy being able to make money simply off of the work that I put into it. And then them also being able to build a life that they want in the process. And there's nothing more freeing than that. And 3D printing has allowed me to do that. And I would want the same thing for you guys. So with all that said, the next thing I want to cover is the negative sides to selling physical and as well as STL files. And what I mean by downsides is like just some of the drawbacks to doing either or and exactly what you should expect if you do decide to go into either of them. So when it comes to selling physical items, some of the drawbacks to this is that you need to hold inventory, meaning that you need to either print something out at that time when someone orders it, or you print in bulk and have it sitting somewhere at, in a shelf or somewhere available to you. So when someone orders it, you can just package it up and ship it out. That holding and inventory, take, it takes up space, it takes up mental bandwidth because just seeing it there also takes up that mental bandwidth in addition to having it sit there. And if it doesn't sell, well, there's nothing you can do because it's already been printed and you just have to wait until it sells for you to make money. And the last thing you would wanna do is just throw it away because it just didn't sell. So that's my point. If you're selling physical items, that means you're just holding inventory. But keep in mind, there's nothing wrong with holding inventory, but rather if you just have a proper setup to hold it in the right spot, in the right place, and that way it doesn't interrupt your workflow or your daily operations, well, there's nothing wrong with that. So the next drawback I wanna cover is the fact that you have to buy more machines in order for your income or revenue to grow. So for example, I already mentioned that if you want to you know, increase your revenue or income, you would usually see most sellers have to increase the amount of machines that they have. And the more machines you have, the more complexity. And this also means at some point you need to start hiring somebody. You need to get some physical body in there who is trained, who understands all the logistics and every piece and part of, part of your daily operations in order to reach the daily workflow or output you want out of your business. And if you have to increase the number of machines in your business in order to increase your revenue, well, you need to start looking for other ways so you don't don't have to rely on more machines to increase your income. 
other ways of doing that, just to kind of give some quick tips. One way to do this is just increasing your average order value. So instead of selling one item for 10 bucks and making, let's just say $5 profit, you sell a couple of items for 25 bucks and you're keeping $15 profit. It's the same amount of work to print something and then package it up for that same low ticket $5 profit compared to that maybe $25 $15 profit, right? So it's the same amount of work. You're still printing and shipping, but you want to make more money in the process. The other way to do it, the second tip is that you can also increase your prices. And while most people are resistant to increasing their prices, you'll never, ever, ever regret making more money from a sale but you will always regret making less from it. So if you can increase your costs or your prices and still able to get the same amount of people buying your products, well, that means you're able to increase your revenue without having to price or buy more machines. So that's ideally kind of like a quick tip for that stuff. Either just increase the average order value so that way people spend more with you or you increase your prices so that way people spend more money with you and you don't have to buy more machines. Additionally, some of the drawbacks to selling physical prints is that you also need capital. So if you're someone that's not you know, making a lot of money, maybe your product doesn't yield you a lot of profit, and maybe you're just not in a position to invest in a new printer, well, buying a new printer is kind of capital intensive. Let's just say your fleet of printers is X1 Carbons, and the specific item that you print requires nylon. Well, you know that means you need to find a way to get capital that $1,500 to buy those X1 carbons to print the product that you need to make money to buy those machines. So my point here is that if you want to sell 3D printed products, some of the drawbacks here is one, you need to hold inventory. Two, you would occasionally would have to buy more machines in order to increase your revenue. And three, you also need to have capital in order to invest in more machines. And or sometimes some people use credit cards or loans or sometimes 0% interest credit cards to fund these purchases. But that's like a whole nother topic for another video. And that's mainly here in the US. The next thing I want to cover is selling STL files. So here I wrote down three things that I think are kind of relevant, especially when it comes to selling STL files and some of the drawbacks to this. So the first one is pirates. And what I mean by this is people stealing your designs and then either reselling them as their own or giving them to telegram groups and or selling them or repurposing them or slightly modifying them as a new file. And while there's really nothing you can do as a designer to prevent that, that's just the nature of the game. There's just bad actors everywhere. So truthfully, there's nothing you can do to get over it or to work around it other than build a community that catches that and then maybe calls it out. But otherwise, there's really nothing you can do. For example, I've had an instance before where someone took my design like clearly took the design, took all the photos and, and images, and then they posted it on Etsy, claiming it as their artwork, as their own item. And it's kind of baffling to think people do that. And this person was like in a different country, not gonna name it, but they were in a different country and they did it. And uh, you really can't, I can't really do anything because I'm here in the US, they're in a different country. And even if I did try to strike it down on Etsy, it still takes a lot of work and you still gotta prove it belongs to you. The second drawback to selling STL files is that there's much less profit. And the reason why I say this is because if you're selling an STL file, you usually would never pay, let's just say 10 bucks for a physical item like you would for a STL. Uh, usually the STL is usually like one fourth of the digital or the physical item. So if something's like 10 bucks, usually the STL is like 250, right? Just on average, not saying that applies to everything. That's just like what I've seen and what I've noticed. Uh, it can vary depending on what niche or what kind of model you're making. But if you're making a model and you're putting it out there, well, that one time purchase that you're getting, whether if you're selling one time or monthly memberships, keep in mind, there's also processing fees that come into it especially on reoccurring purchases and or one-time purchases. For example, I've sold on Colts 3D. They take 20%, I, I'm left with 80%. So let's just say I, if I sell a product for $10, they take 20%, which is two bucks, which leaves me with $8. And in my opinion, 20% is kind of a lot of money. Now keep in mind, I am using their brand, their website, their store, or their marketplace to kind of push my products out there. And those processing fees do add up, especially once you start making thousands, tens of thousands, or even hundred thousands of dollars in digital sales, which is why anyone that I work with, I always tell them they should start selling on their own platform or site, even for both physical and STL files, mainly because these processing fees, although they will never go away, you ideally want to remove these as much as you can and get them as low as you can. So that way you keep more of the profits and you can reinvest either into yourself or either into your business. The next thing here is the time investment. So there's a huge amount of time that you need to invest in order to create files. Like all of these designs here, these took time. Like these were not like overnight. In addition, all the files here, right? All of these files here, that file there, that storage crate there at the bottom right-hand side, these took time to make. 
And um, truthfully, it takes time, it takes a level of skill, and it also takes a deep level of understanding of 3D printing in order to make these designs and make them 3D printable and making sure they're 3D printable for someone else as well. So that time investment that you need to commit into this to selling STL files requires you to sit down at your desk and focus on learning how to create your own models, learning the differences between functional and articulated, learning the differences as to what pieces work, what pieces fit, what clearances you need for a specific item, if items snap on, or if you're making articulated designs, you know, how, how are the rings set up? How are they connected? Which pieces and parts are connected? These things, these are things that are overlooked and these are time investments you need to make. And sometimes even the amount of time that you do invest don't even get you results or sales. So if you're like a designer or creator, someone who's been selling five but you're not getting sales, well, you probably know this pain all too well. Because truthfully, just because you put out a design out into the world, that doesn't mean you're gonna make money. And those are just some of the drawbacks to this. So both physical and STL files have their own ups and downs, but truthfully, you want to just pick one that works best for you. If you're someone that like wants to sell digital assets specifically because you want the passive income, the time freedom, and the ability to work remotely, at least from anywhere in the world, well, that gives you the ability to do that. But if you want to sell physical items that build a brand with more profit margins, and maybe you want to build a farm in the process, well, that's also great. Just make sure that's your goal at the end of the day. And what I just going off the cuff here, usually when I work with people, I usually ask them like, hey, what's your goal? Like, what do you want? What's your life design? And by structuring your life design, you're basically saying what you want out of your life. And if having a print farm doesn't match with that life design you want, well, it doesn't make sense to build a print farm. And or if maybe you want to travel the world or, you know, have three vacations, four vacations per year, well, does doing this get you that life design? And you really need to have a goal before you get started, because once you have that goal, it's very easy to to get that get to that goal much faster compared to not having so with all that said the last thing i want to cover is whether you should sell physical and stl files at the same time and in my personal opinion i would say yes but don't intermix the two meaning that you want to have your own storefront for custom or printed products and then one storefront for STL files, but keeping them separate as their own business identity. The reason for this is because if you have them on your own store and you're sending people who are into 3D printing, people who are into 3D printing, they're not gonna buy your physical products. And then if someone goes to your store and see a certain part or piece is 3D printed and they happen to have a 3D printer, well, you're really just shooting yourself in the foot because then they just want the STL file, not the physical item. And my point here is that you're trying to build a business selling products and STL files, and that's the goal, but you don't want to intermix the traffic because keep in mind, 3D printing is a niche on its own. Like that's an entire community. That's a group of people who are into a specific topic while your niche or store is an entirely different thing on its own and you should keep them separate. Now, in terms of the expenses that you incur, whatever that looks like, or even the name, you can also reuse the name but I would suggest remixing it. So for example, maybe if, for example, my creator name on Maker World or on uh, Printables or wherever, it's like make it 3D, but I might change it into like make it creations or my last name creations. So just kind of mixing it up and all I'm really doing is just changing the name. I'm not really changing the product. And I also want to make it clear that if you're selling an STL file, you want to include something like STL file in the title or description. So that way someone with a 3D printer would resonate with that and know what you're talking about. But if you're selling a physical item, well, you would not mention STL file. You would just mention the product details or what it's made out of and exactly what it does or functions. And that would provide value to that customer, whoever that customer is. These are just a quick few things that I've learned over the past five years of doing this. Truthfully, there's probably even more. These are just things that I got off the top of my head and just kind of things that I've learned over the years after working with people, helping them start their business, and as well as some of the things that I've learned from them. Because truthfully, you know, I don't have a print farm to really just bounce off ideas like this, but just learning from other people and seeing what they've done with their farms, I can tell like it's a lot of work, but also making files is a lot of work. So you just got to pick your poison and pick which one you like to do the most. And um, if you're able to stick to it and do it for an extended period of time, you can really turn this hobby into a full-time income. It just takes work. So with that said, that pretty much wraps up today's video. And I know this might feel like information overload, especially if you're just getting started and especially with all the opportunity within 3D printing. But if I were to boil it down, just pick something that you actually like, 
you're interested in and actually stick to it for at least three to six months. And I think you'd be surprised based off of the results that you see. But with that said, thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in starting and scaling your 3D printing business, um, we've added slots to the Prince product program, literally helping people start and grow the 3D printing business. We literally have people selling STL files and memberships in addition to members, literally with their own print farms and their basement. So there's room for everyone to succeed with this hobby. You just gotta pick something that you like and stick to it. But with that said, if you're interested, there's gonna be a link down below in the description. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.